Scott Weaver with Designers Workroom. So today we are going to go over how to shape fabrics in the sense of shaping them to make balances. We're going to do two of them today. We're going to do an arch shape balance and we're going to do a scallop balance. I'm going to show you the quickest, the easiest way to do it. And one of the tools that I use all the time and you've probably noticed in my other videos is a chain weight. This is a beaded weight makes it much easier for shaping, scalloping, what have you. Uh, you will find this on my Amazon store. It's an affiliate link, so yes, I do get paid a slight amount for it. And that's not really the purpose of the video. I'm just trying to find places where you can find the same tools that I work with in my workroom all the time. And this happens to be one of, one of my favorites. Um, so let's get started. The first one I'm going to start with is a shape balance. So I pre-cut a piece of fabric, and this we are going to make the scallop out of first. And let me bring that camera down so you can see a little bit better. Okay, there we are. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to shape this out. This is what the fabric looks like right here. And we are going to shape this out into um, a nice little scallop. So I cut my piece of fabric 17 inches uh, deep. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this piece of fabric in half. This is 54 inches wide. Uh, now this is only scrap fabric. I'm only doing this uh, for you guys, for the sake of um, yourselves, and to help with people who just can't quite grasp everything. I'm hoping this is going to help you out a little bit. And let's just bring that down a little bit. Okay, so here is our fabric like that. So I'm going to start with two points. As I stated, this is 17 to the longest point. I'm going to do um, 13 inches here. So I'm going from 13 to 17. That's going to be my shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark here at 13 inches. Now that mark is going to be a half inch of straightness to it. And that's my sewing allowance, which I'll explain in a minute. So basically, there's my 13 inches right here. And I'm going to make sure that's a half inch for my sewing allowance. And now I'm going to shape it down. And this is why the importance of using something so you don't have to eyeball it. Now normally I'd be using a pencil. Don't be using an ink marker. But for your benefit, so you can actually see what I'm doing, I'm using something that's a little darker. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it a little better, I'm hoping. All right. So there's my half inch allowance. Now you can see where this beaded chain comes in really handy because now I can go ahead and make my little scalloping. Make sure I have it just the way I like it. Now this would be for a rod pocket or just something you want to board mount, but basically you'd probably be making this for a rod pocket. So now I'm just going to take this and I am going to mark it, and that's why the chain weight is invaluable because you can pretty much so follow it pretty good. So of course I'm, I have this folded in half, so when I cut it, we're going to um, have a full scallop. So when I open this up, this is my shape. Let me go back a little bit so you can see it. Alright, so that is my shaping. It's 
now you can take this. If you're making a large one, now you can take this and you can stack them on top and cut three, four, or five scallops if you have a real big window. Um, that's the most effective way to do it. Okay. Now, for the ends. This is a full width. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to cut this a little different than you would do it. Most likely, I'm going to put it like this. Like I said, I've worked in a workroom for a very long time, so uh, this is just one of the methods that we use for cutting things in half. Now I'm dealing with a half width, and you're going to see what this is going to look like because on here we've got our 13 inches. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to mark this part 13 inches. And again with that same half inch, like that. Now, we're going to give this a little shaping. in half. I have my half inch mark right there. I'm going to go to a point. I just come over like that. Now I'm going to open this up. And now we're going to pin it. This half comes over here. Lined up with my half inch mark. That's why it's squared off, because when you join it, it will no longer be squared off. You'll lose that flatness. Now in a minute we're going to pan this whole thing, but I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. And then we're going to put the other half on this side. Get this down here and then let's open the whole thing and see if we can pan the whole balance so you can see what it looks like. Here. Starting from that end. Going all the way to the other end of it. I believe you can see the whole thing. And then let's zoom out a little bit. And then let's take another look at it. So hopefully you can get a good idea of what that looks like all together. So that is one shaping right there. That's how easy that is to do. 
And now we're going to do a second one. This one we're going to do just a little bit differently. So we're working with two different lengths of fabric. This one was still cut at 17 inches. And this one is cut at... Thirty-one, so it finish at thirty inches. So we're going to start with the full width right here. That's going to be our center, and going to fold it in half. Now in this case, we're going to use again like a three inch difference. Uh, this was cut at 17 inches here. And we're going to put a mark over here at 14 inches. Let's bring this down a little bit so you can see it hopefully. And yeah, hopefully you can see that. Okay, now, get this over here a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put a mark at 14 inches. Sorry I'm playing with the camera a little bit. It's a little new of, um, of a camera, a little different camera for me, so it takes me a little bit of time to get used to it. Okay, there's my 14. Here we're going to go all the way to the bottom. Once again, I'm going to put my half inch mark right here. That's a half inch, so when I join it, um, and this way you can, again, you can use multiple widths by using this piece and putting them on top and you can cut them all. So if you have three arches, uh, you can do three arches, you can do two arches, whatever it is that you need. I recommend to use at least two times the amount of fabric on your window. So if your window is 48 inches wide, you definitely want to use at least 96 inches of material to give it that fullness if you're talking about a rod pocket balance. So again, to make this arch, is I'm just going to go just like this. Now you can use however much of an arch. This is just a very slight arch. And that is going to be up to you. Whatever you feel is proportionate for your type of situation. I mean, you can come up like this if you want to make a very high arch or you can bring it down. Totally up to you on which way you want to do it. This particular case, I guess it doesn't really matter uh, just because I'm doing this for your benefit. And this is not a customer's. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here using the chain weight. I just find the chain weight is the easiest way to make a balance. There we are. We're going to go ahead and cut that. that kind of looks like. Hopefully you can see that all right. Get a little closer so you can see it like that. Okay, so that's that's that arch right there. We'll keep it in the camera. Now we're going to shape out the ends. This is, again, this is the full width that I'm going to cut in half. 
So I'm going to fold my piece in half, and again, you don't have to do it this way. You can you can do it however you can measure, however you want to cut yours in half. I'm just used to cutting my piece in half by folding it in like that, turning it. I usually throw a clamp on it. These clamps are also great too. Um, they're just like giving you extra hands when you when you need them. Uh, if I can find them on Amazon, I'm going to put a link to those little guys too. I, I find with Amazon there's so many things in there, so I'm going to find a, a link to these little clamps. I have various different types. This is just one of them that I like to use. Especially if you're dealing with a lot of fabrics, you can clamp all your fabric down using them. And you'll notice in my videos I use these a lot. Alright, so there is my fabric folded in half and let's go back to our arch again I think our arch here is at uh, that uh, short point of 17 inches so we're going to go ahead and mark this at 17 inches with a half inch of flatness for the sewing allowance. Okay. Let's see if I can get you a little closer here. So there's a couple ways you can do it with an arch. Now a lot of people think an arch is going to come down straight like that, okay? But I don't like that toothpick look to it. A, I don't like the toothpick look and it looks skimpy. So the way I like to arch things is I start off with the arch, but then I give it a curve this way. Now, what happens to that curve is you lose a lot of that curve when it is... Um, especially on a rod pocket because it's all shirred up. So this curving becomes much smaller, but without it, it becomes a real toothpick coming all the way to the corner here. So I like this softness right here, and I don't like coming to a point at the bottom. This is my personal preference, but with the, how you do it and how I do it may be totally different, and that's okay. That's what makes it unique, your own style. Um, the idea with the chain weight, of course, is that you can see what it looks like before you cut it and you're not wasting a lot of fabric trying to do it. what that looks like right there. Let's give you a little bit more of a zoom. And let's re take a look at the other one again. Now that we have the camera up a little higher, you can see what it looks like. Now, I 
would not be shaping my lining the same way as I just shaped this out. I, what I would do is I'd cut my lining to the longest length that there is. I would join my linings together. I would sew my valance all shaped out in widths where I have them pinned. Then I'd take that and I'd flip it right side to right side on my lining. I'd pin it all in and then I would trim off my lining. So I would not be cutting my lining and my fabric shaping it like this. Only my fabric gets shaped this way. My linings are going to be joined just square, just straight. Put that down first. Put your balance on top of it that is all shaped. And then trim all your lining. Sew along your bottom, sew along your tops. Um, leave a side opening. You will find how to make uh, a lot of different balances on my, on my uh, on my YouTube station. So if, if you're unsure of how to do the whole thing, whether it's be a rod pocket, look at some of my other videos because there's a lot of other videos that will show it. In this particular video, I just wanted to show you how to shape out balances. Probably the most productive way to do it where you can take multiple widths and stack them and cut them instead of trying to join one big balance together and then doing all your shaping. Um, I find it easier this way. So um, again, this is what the, the chain weight looks like. This is like 500 yards of it. Um, mine, mine is so, uh, I've used mine so much, but it actually is white like this. Mine's years old, I mean, I've been using the same shaping string. This actually goes in uh, sheer or anything for a weighted bottom. Anyhow, uh, this is how I do it. Uh, I hope you've learned something, um, or a couple of tips at least. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. It's Scott Weaver with Designers Workroom, and I will catch you later.